that's where I started learning genomics. I was doing a lot of DNA science stuff, but it was all using old school genetics methods. So low throughput, if I want to find something, I'm going to clone it out myself, sequence it myself, do everything. And then somebody was like, why don't you just do that to every gene in the genome at the same time? My friend Doug Fowler and Carlos Araya, who were in Stan Fields' lab, were like, do this the high throughput way. That's <laughs> where the world was going. And they taught me how to do it. So I combined the kinds of things that I was doing in the past with sort of sequencing methods. Same approach. You know, I started saying like, look, this thing works in a particular species. Let's crank it up with the power of genomics and clone it in all these other species. It's the same car analogy where it's like, let's understand not just how, whatever, the alternator of this car works, but how the whole car works kind of in its parts. Now we have another car and a different car, a bit car and a little car that became a merge molecular genetics and comparative biology, where you're sort of, you're saying, okay, here's a protein that does a function. Here's how it works in 15 different organisms that are similar, but different. I started doing that. I started doing a lot of work in other yeast species, not because I necessarily cared about those yeast species, but because they are similar, but different machines that do the same thing using slightly different parts. If you understand all the parts, all the ways that this can be done, you get a better understanding of how things work. That was the general flavor of what we did. We also did a lot of really cool experimental evolution science. You can grow continuous cultures of yeast in these machines called chemostats or turbidostats, where you're basically yeah. creating conditions where things evolve continuously for particular features. You see how they modified their genome to adapt to something, right? Like you evolve some yeast over hundreds of generations in the limiting of some nutrient. You're like, okay, now I'm going to give you no phosphate. Yeah. Let's see how you evolve now. And then you see what it figured out how to do. Like it's divide, yeah. it amplifies some genes and mutates some stuff. And you're like, what did you do? Like, aha, that's how it adapted to low phosphate. Therefore, these genes are important for phosphate. So that's the idea is that let's evolve these things, see what they do.